Good evening, you're watching Rwanda Television News in English. We'll begin with the headlines. A 500 hectare area in the Masaka sector of Chichiro district is slated to become a health hub expropriation work will begin as soon as the master plan for the area's operation is unveiled. The Minister of Health reveals that there is a plan to increase the number of health workforce in the next four years, including anesthetists. Uh, my name is Olive Nete. Welcome to the News in Details. A 500 area in the Masaka sector of Chichiro district is slated to become a health hub. Expropriation work will begin as soon as the master plan of the area's operation is unveiled. We have the details. In Masaka sector in Chichiro district, there are some new infrastructures established, such as health institutions. However, there are also those that are still under construction. Eugenie Mukam Sabga lives near the Masaka Hospital. She's been living in the area since 2000. She testifies the development that has been progressing in the area since then. When we arrived in this place, there was no modernized infrastructures. There were damaged roads with no asphalt road, but now you can see that roads are well constructed. There were a few residents. People could often suffer from malaria and other diseases, but now things have changed. The benefits of having these hospitals around is that we can easily access and get medical services without traveling a long distance for it. Other benefits is that people can get jobs in these institutions. Apart from the Masaka Hospital providing medical services to residents around and from various places in the country, there is also the Irkad Center that was recently inaugurated. In this area, there is also an ongoing establishment that will be home to the Kigali Teaching Hospital, CHUK, and also the Heart Center, which is under construction. Residents in Masaka sector say this is an indicator of the development in this area. You can see it for yourself, comparing to how it was back in 2020, it is different from how it is in 2023. This means that as years goes by, developmental activities keeps emerging and this truly assists us in our daily lives because since 2020, there's also an increase of people who come to live in the area. As the establishment of infrastructure activities are ongoing, there is also need of an area where these infrastructures will be set. There is need of 500 hectare for the establishment of various health-related institutions, as explained by Mutsinzi Antoine, the executive administrator of Chichiro District. People don't know this yet, but we have stopped providing construction permits in this area so that we can first get the master plan and we know where expropriation activities will be carried out. But also, we are encouraging people to invest since one area will be used for construction of health institutions, but the upper part will be other infrastructural activities, supporting the health infrastructure activities that are said to be established in this area. That is why we are urging people to invest in Masaka, because as these health infrastructural activities continues to be established, it is understandable that the number of workforce will increase. There will also be need for homes to stay in, markets for them to get what they need. Overall, there is need for developmental activities that align with this area. The Chisho District Administration also notes that the updated master plan for the use of land in Masaka is being expedited so that they may know the number of properties to expropriate so as to start construction activities in the health city. People in private sector are encouraged to think about investing in the area since the master plan will be launched soon. Now to agricultural matters. Farmers are calling for the adoption of an agriculture and livestock law in Rwanda in order to increase production and food security. This is said as the figures of the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda show that 20% of Rwandans do not have enough food. Prince Manzi with the details. All over the field, farmers are confident that in this planting season of the 2024A, they will get a harvest because beans, corn, potatoes and rice have received enough rain. 
It is at a time when the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources and other agencies had asked farmers that all the land in the country intended for agriculture should be cultivated in order to increase production. Some of the farmers said that not planting, it was due to the lack of valid seeds. Others did not comply with the instructions simply because they do not live across the said areas. Beans, maize, it is all good unless the rain hits heavily or the climate change. Otherwise, the produce will be there. The president of the Farmers Association, Jean-Paul Munyakazi, states that the lack of law that governs agriculture and livestock is one of the reasons why Rwandans face food in surface. In Rwanda, there is no agriculture and livestock law. We request for its adoption so that the policies in place be based on that law and provide a line of operation. We request the Rwanda Parliament to reanalyze the law governing this sector. The coordinator of the Great Lakes Initiatives for Human Rights and Development, Tom Mulisa, demonstrates that they conducted the research on policies governing the agriculture and livestock in Rwanda and found there to be a gap. Policies we have governing food security, we conducted the research for analyzing if they are not outdated. We request for the update, answer issues that are of a concern to residents. For instance, the policy requesting someone to plant one type of crop, and yet we talk about the balanced diet. Can there be a way of planting various crops on the same land? The Minister of Agriculture and Animal Resources emphasizes that there are a lot to be changed in agriculture and livestock. There should be a proper collaboration scheme rather than finding the agronomist doing his and the mayor doing his. They should all work together for having an effective usage of funds allocated in this sector up to the final user, the farmer. In this 2024A planting season, an area of more than 790,000 hectares had to be planted. Farmers were urged to cultivate all the land intended for agriculture. Those who could not, the land was given to others. Prince Manzi, TV News. Now to other matters, the Ministry of Health reveals that there is a plan to increase the number of health workforce in the next four years, including anesthetists. It is at a time when the scarcity of anesthetists continues to be a challenge for patients. Prince Manzi once more. In different health centers across the country, those who need services, including anesthesia, find it necessary to increase the number of specialists in this profession. <laughs> Anesthesia helps a mother to give birth and painfully. It even requires high skills. It is God's work in humans. We want an increase in the number of anesthetists. Dr. Celeste Seneza is a professional anesthetist at Chibagabaga Hospital. Even though there is a small number of anesthetists, because the aim is to have a patient heal, Dr. Seneza is the only anesthetist at this hospital. This affects the hospital performance as elaborated by the hospital administration. Asunta Amuraje, a lecturer at the University of Rwanda, discloses that students requesting to study anesthesia are on a lower rate. Currently, we have a lower number of these students compared to the needed number of the anesthetists. In the Ministry of Health's four times four reform, aims at increasing the number of health workers in the next four years. It will help in addressing this issue. There are also other measurements in place, as explained by Dr. Menela Sineshimana, the head of the Department of Health Workforce Development at the Ministry of Health. We urge colleges to increase the number of students in these faculties and to support them in terms of resources. The government introduced a scholarship program to support students willing to undertake these courses. There is also a welfare reform of motivating health workers. 
Anesthetists are required to study for 10 years, including six years of studying medicine and another four years of studying anesthesia. In Rwanda, there are about 60 people at this level working in public and private hospitals. There are 399 other doctors who have studied it at the university level in a period of four years. Prince Manzi, RTV News. You're still watching RTV News. Welcome to today's health segment on RTV News Still. We'll discuss the importance of adhering to Rwanda's routine vaccination program for children and its impact on child's growth. We are honored to have Hassan Siomana, the director of vaccination program at the Rwanda Biomedical Center, who will be joining us in studio. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. We'll go straight to, the, to today's topic. Could you provide uh, an overview of the recent vaccination program for children in Rwanda? Uh, what are vaccines included? And also, at what ages are they administered? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the vaccination program in Rwanda was established in 1980 with very few antigens because actually at that time there was only um, uh, six antigens, uh, six vaccines, but currently uh, we are providing 12 antigens, 12 vaccines in routine vaccination. So we start to vaccinate children actually uh, at birth and then uh, some other vaccines are being provided at one month and a half, two months and a half, three months and a half, nine months and then 15 months. So all those uh, antigens, some of them can be repeated, like uh, the vaccine we're providing at uh, birth. We are providing BCG uh, against tuberculosis and also oropore vaccines. At one, end, one month and a half, we are also providing uh, oropore vaccine uh, plus a pantavalent vaccine. This pantavalent vaccine actually uh, include five vaccines in one. These are uh, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, hepatitis B, hemophilus influenza, and then in addition to all these vaccines, we provide also pneumonia vaccine and also rotavirus vaccine uh, uh, against diarrhea. So all these vaccines actually being provided at one month and a half, uh, they are repeated at two months and a half, and three months and a half, and then at nine months, we just provide measles and rubella vaccine plus inactivated polio vaccine, and at 15 months also we provide um, uh, measles and rubella vaccines. So all these vaccines, actually, most of them have been introduced since 2002. Uh, as you can uh, understand, actually, now we are also vaccinating all those top killers of children, including pneumonia and uh, diarrhea. So um, the success of vaccination program actually also, um, uh, we can separate supply chain management. So we have a very good supply chain management of vaccines. At central level, we have uh, one store Actually, this is the one serving all hospitals. And then from hospitals, actually, um, health centers can collect vaccine on a monthly basis. So actually, it is uh, very important to highlight that uh, actually a very good vaccination program. Actually, we, we, we ensure also the accessibility and also the availability of vaccines. So I can say that uh, in all our health centers, so we don't have issue of vaccines. Uh, all of them actually uh, can be provided and uh, most of the time, actually, you would see that uh, in health centers, sometimes they are having a very good plan where health centers, actually, some of them are providing vaccine on a daily basis, and the others actually can have a plan to provide vaccine two times a week, three times a week. So actually, it depends also on the size of children to be vaccinated. So this is also very important to highlight so that our population can understand that um, they have to be in touch always with health centers so that they can uh, know the plan of vaccination to all health centers. Mm. You have listed all the vaccines that are needed um, for a child uh, in the child's long run to, to grow, but what are the benefits of adhering to the vaccination program and also how does vaccination contribute to a child's growth? Yeah, this is very important. Actually, there is a, a very close relationship between infection and sentiment and nutrition. And um, when actually these both infections and the malnutrition actually um, can be observed to a child, so the child who is not vaccinated, so it is easy actually to be uh, infected with the, any infection. And then when the child is uh, infected, actually also malnutrition can uh, take uh, also um, can be, um, uh, they can have also the malnutrition. So if uh, these two issues actually they are at uh, the same time to, to, to the child, so actually it is very complicated because uh, at that time actually we'll have a healthy population 
and therefore actually will have a very short uh, life expectancy to our population. So I can say that actually vaccines are very important to uh, the growth of the child because actually when the child is uh, vaccinated, so at the same time you are uh, actually avoiding infections but also other health issues like malnutrition. It's very important actually to uh, ensure that actually vaccination, uh, vaccines are provided to uh, the child and the child is fully vaccinated. Mm. Aside from malnutrition, are there any other specific diseases that pose a greater risk to the, in such cases, to the child's growth and development? Yeah, it is very important to highlight that, uh, let us take the, the example of hepatitis B. So in routine vaccination, actually we are providing also hepatitis B. Some infections actually can lead also to non-communicable disease because someone who is not vaccinated uh, for the example of hepatitis B, if that person is having um, uh, uh, let us say he's infected with hepatitis. So actually uh, there is a high chance of, of having also uh, cancer, of liver cancer. So you can understand that actually vaccines can also uh, play a big role in uh, also uh, um, cook, cook, in also avoiding uh, like non-communicable disease. This, so this is the case of uh, liver cancer, but also we have uh, cervical cancer. You know, we, ha we are also providing uh, HPV, human papillomavirus uh, vaccines. So actually these vaccines, both of them, hepatitis and the HPV vaccines, can also help us to uh, avoid or to uh, protect our children against uh, this kind of uh, non-communicable disease like liver cancer and cervical cancer. Mm. Mm. So um, you, you, you say that at health centers, uh, they do these programs of vaccinations. Uh, can you explain the efforts and strategies in place to ensure the accessibility and availability of vaccines in different regions of Rwanda, especially in remote areas or underdeserved communities? Um, the way the health system is built here in Rwanda, so actually uh, you will find that at all levels, uh, from uh, community level to um, central level, so there is at least um, uh, a layer of health structure which can provide uh, health services. So on our side, at central level, we have vaccination program, but also we have at a district level, intermediate level. So we actually are having also stores of vaccine which are helping us to distribute vaccine. But uh, the most important one is uh, the vaccination point in health centers. And as you know, we have health centers in all sectors. So this is very important. Actually, uh, when we say actually accessibility in public health, we uh, most of the time refer to the geography and the finance. So vaccines actually are being provided free of charge. So this is very important to highlight. So uh, for anyone who, um, any child who is uh, insured, who has uh, health insurance or not, and also um, on the side of geography, so it is very important to highlight that uh, in all health centers now in Rwanda, we are providing vaccines free of charge. So in the future, before the end of this year, so we are trying our best to uh, ensure that we can expand also vaccination services in health posts. So this will help our population to get actually vaccines closer to their home. And um, therefore we think that actually it will also um, uh, solve the issue of unvaccinated children. Because today, uh, vaccination coverage is very high. 96% uh, of Rwandan children are fully vaccinated, but we still have that uh, remaining 4%. So all of them actually, we are trying our best to make sure that they can be vaccinated. And again, uh, when you are saying vaccination coverage for me, uh, I always say that it is the history. So every single day there is a number of children, actually newborns. So we need to ensure that all of them are vaccinated. And for your information, so actually, if you go to test statistics, so there is always estimation of 800 to 1,000 newborns every single day. So meaning that every year, we need to ensure that all those new birth cohorts are vaccinated. Mm. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us an insight on vaccination programs in Rwanda. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. And we really think that this is important to mothers who are planning to conceive, but also those who have newborns. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's all we had for you today. Many thanks for sticking with us. My name is Olive Nete. See you next.